So as a first example to show some practical applications of the concept we have discussed it so far, please consider uh, this short snippet. Is a possible error from the developer led him to return a result which is not what he intended. Instead of the length variable he or she probably meant to return the local object area instantiated in the line above. Now, problem is that the constructor is a callable with a, a single argument of fundamental type, which is integer in this, in this case. And this allows the constructor itself to be used implicitly to convert from the fundamental type to the class type. That is what happens, and therefore the, compa the compiler is correct being silent in the case of area. But unfortunately, this doesn't prevent the error to occur. What can prevent the error is instead the usage of the explicit keywords, which is uh, in the example of volume, so in the, in the struct volume, which is shown below. In that way, the constructor can only be used to perform direct initialization of an object or to perform an explicit cast. And the compiler will issue an error uh, wherever there is an attempt to implicitly convert between fundamental type and class type. So basically you can see there there is a comment compiler error which will happen when you try to do the same uh, as for the area uh, structure. This issue, uh, although invisible to the compiler, uh, we, we tried that with GNU uh, in version 4.9 and with Clang in version 3.5 and neither of them warn against such problems, can be spot by a static analyzer. For example, QAC++, uh, which is our C++ static analyzer, uh, equipped with a, a high-integrity C++ coding standard compliance module, we realize that agnostic against the rule uh, 12.1.1, uh, which is the rule uh, which warns in uh, a high integrity C++ against the declaration of implicit user-defined conversions. Uh, such a rule is also present in MISRA C++ 2008 and is classified as rule 12.1.3. And so you can see that basically we made the analysis and we uploaded the result directly on QVerify and uh, um, uh, a robust coding standard like uh, high integrity C++ uh, will be able uh, to detect this kind of issue and war against it. So the relevant violation is here highlighted in yellow in our software quality management system, which is QAVerify. And we used, uh, as said, our QAC++ uh, component to make this kind of analysis, equipped also with the secondary analysis in a high integrity C++. Now the, the second example uh, belongs to the same family of issues of the former one but there is a twist. In this case the compiler will generate implicitly a default constructor and uh, even if the developer defined a template constructor explicitly so this will happen if you want under the hood and as a consequence, copy semantics for members requiring deep copies can be incorrect. In this example, since the constructor, which will be used in the function f to construct the object a2 from the object a1, is uh, probably unexpectedly from the unaware user, the number one and not the templated number two, the shallow copy of the pointer uh, member uh, i will result in both a1.i uh, and a1.a2.i uh, pointing to the same integer object. Now whether this was intentional or accidental, it's up to the developer to know it. Probably in this case he meant to, to make a different thing, he meant, to, he, he meant to do a complete copy of the original object. Unfortunately, again, the compiler won't raise any warnings on this issue. Uh, while a suitable static analyzer will be able to, to spot it. And for example, QC++, again, in this case with a MISRA C++ coding standard compliance module, will raise a diagnostic against rule 14.5.2, uh, which says basically, as reported there, that a copy constructor shall be declared 
when there is a template constructor with a single parameter that is a generic parameter. And again, we analyzed uh, this snippet with our analyzer and uploaded the results on QVerify. And you can see there highlighted the, the, the message reporting the issue. So this will help either in terms of prevention of a possibly overlooked erroneous situation and also for educational purposes. So having the possibility to add annotations like reported there uh, on this specific diagnostic will provide further fuel to the productivity and the quality management that the quality management is able to provide.